Anyway, other folks, this concept is super simple. When I started thinking about all of my training in terms of how super compensation works, it radically changed the way I programmed. And you can take advantage of the same principle for any goal that you're going after. But before we get started, my name is Alicia. I am the owner and main trainer here at Wilder Fitness, and we help athletes of all kinds get ready for endurance and outdoor events. So make sure you follow us on Instagram and subscribe on here so you don't miss another video. Today, we are gonna talk about what super compensation is and how you can use it to supercharge your training. This is the concept that guides all of our coaching plans here at Wilder. It's so simple, but it's really fundamental in understanding that your workouts need to be taking you towards a specific outcome. And the truth is, random workouts, they're gonna help keep you to at the fitness level that you're at now, but they're not gonna have enough of an impact on you physiologically or muscularly to make a change to your system. And let me get this straight right off the hop. There is nothing wrong with taking a random exercise class, hopping into Zumba or something fun that's gonna get you moving. And above all else, any kind of movement is good, but specific training is going to get you specific results. But before we dive into the heart of this, I wanna know what you're training for. So please pop a comment in the comment box below and tell me what you're training for specifically. Now, it is my favorite time because it is graph time. And you guys know that I am a sucker for any kind of graph. So we're gonna pop a graph up on the screen right here, if I can properly edit it in. And we're gonna use that graph to explain what super compensation is. And I'm gonna use the example of a guy named Joe who is specifically working on his biceps in order to explain this graph. But remember, this graph can apply to any physiological capacity that you're working on. Are you trying to become a faster runner? Use this curve. Are you trying to climb mountains quicker? Use this curve. Are you trying to recover from an injury? Use this curve. But let's learn about it using Joe's biceps. So Joe is a pretty strong guy. He can do one strong, strict bicep curl with 50 pounds. Way to go, Joe. He wants to make that uh, a higher number though. He wants to increase the strength of his biceps muscles. So Joe is going to go into the gym. The moment he steps into the gym, that's him at the beginning of this curve. He has a specific amount of strength along this axis over at this point in time. Our time is this axis here. So Joe is going to apply a stressor. That stressor for Joe's biceps is going to be a workout. He's probably gonna do a bunch of different curls, some regular ones, some barbell ones, some preacher curls, some hammer curls, whatever. He's doing a bunch of work that's going to make micro tears in those biceps fibers. When he is done his workout, that stressor will actually make his biceps weaker than they were at the beginning of the workout. Think about it, you go into the gym, if you lift heavy and you're really exhausted, you're gonna be able to do much less at the end of the workout than you were at the beginning. So Joe goes home. His biceps are erect, he really pushed it. But he takes time to rest and recover. The hormones that are released, the fact that he's done some micro damage to his biceps, all those are gonna send signals to his body that he's gonna to have to lift this load again and his body better get stronger so it's easier for him to do. So Joe rests, he recovers, he comes back into the gym, and sure enough, he can lift more than the last time he tried. This is Joe using his super compensation curve to become a stronger bicep curler. When Joe comes back into the gym, he's gonna push himself pretty hard again, and he's gonna see some progress. He's gonna lift more weight, he's gonna cause more micro damage, he's gonna get more hormones to be released, and sure enough, Joe is going to be weaker at the end of that workout, but he's gonna rest and recover, and again, his strength is going to go up. This is a super simple concept, but it can often be lost when we plan our workouts, or if we don't plan our workouts. Makes plenty of sense when you apply it to biceps, 
However, remember that this is going to work for any physiological system you have. So when you're talking about wanting to be stronger in any muscle, supercompensation applies. If you're talking about wanting to have a stronger aerobic system, supercompensation applies. If you're talking about wanting to be able to climb that hill faster, supercompensation applies. The trouble with our workouts sometimes is we fall into these traps. There's a few that I'm gonna to mention today. We're gonna to break this into a couple personas, people that you can embody that accidentally get in the way of you using a super compensation curve to make progress in your fitness. The first is you can be a restless Randy. Restless Randy takes no rest. And so what happens to a super compensation curve is he's not ever able to fully actually recover. You wanna make sure you're taking adequate rest and that's rest for your system as well as rest for specific muscles as well. The second persona you can take on that can interfere with your super compensation is being a same weight Sammy. So if you've lifted the same 50 pounds for your back squat, every time you've worked out for the last five years, your body has fully adapted to that load. And because you're also getting more efficient at lifting over time, you might actually lose muscle mass while you're at it as well. So same weight Sammies don't progress the weight or difficulty of their workouts. And so they don't get gains. The third persona you can have that's gonna interfere with that super compensation curve is you can be a random Ron. Random Rons will come in one day, they'll work on their power. The next day they'll come in and work on their one rep max strength. The day after that, they'll come in and see how far they can run in 40 minutes. Without an overarching plan, Random Ron is moving this way and then that way and then this way. And he's never actually getting enough progress, enough volume and training load to make a change that sticks to any one of his physiological systems. At Wilder, we try and improve one muscular and one energy system at a time. And the reason we do that is because then we can make very big gains in that specific area before we move on to a new parameter. There's a lot of nuances here. There's a lot of ways that you can make this fancier, but as long as you remember that we need to stress our muscle or our energy system to a new level each time we train it. And we need to take enough rest to let that change in our body happen. We're gonna do just fine with our training.